Aisha Jaquila Degree, known to her family and peers simply as Aisha, was a curious, empathetic, and sensitive young girl. Her deep-rooted love for family, school activities, and innocent, youthful passion for basketball was cut short by an unexplainable, unsolved disappearance in the early morning hours of Valentine's Day 2000, leaving all who knew her across her hometown of Shelby, North Carolina, grasping for answers in a sea of evidence that drowned us all in doubt. As a hope to provide more substantial reasoning built upon observable evidence and situational analysis, this is an examination of the disappearance of Asia Degree and the trail of clues near the woods along State Highway NC-180. This is Cold Case Detective. On February 14, 1988, a Valentine's Day full of endless joy, the energy of true love and excitement for the future, saw the happy couple of Harold and Akila Degree get married. Two years later, on August 5, 1990, the husband and wife gave birth to a little girl, Aisha, and soon the couple became a family of four, adding a baby boy named O'Brien. The Degrees stuck to their roots in Shelby, North Carolina, and blossomed as a close-knit family in their cozy residential home in the northern rural area, the state west of Charlotte. Both Harold and Akila worked regular daytime jobs, making Aisha and O'Brien latchkey kids once they reached the age to attend school. This youthful independence didn't deter the children, however, and the degree parents were 100% comfortable in trusting the Falston Elementary School's efforts to return their son and daughter safely home. Aisha specifically understood the security needed to navigate after-school loneliness and was wary of strangers, even as a toddler. From kindergarten onwards, Harold and Aquila knew their children would be at home completing homework or chores when they returned from their respective workplaces. As Aisha's mind flourished in an educational environment, so did her interests and personalities. While she spent a bulk of her free time at home, she did involve herself in extracurricular activities at Falston, joining the local youth basketball league. Through patience, teamwork, and an innocently competitive spirit, Aisha quickly developed into a star point guard for her age, and she often lifted her teammates to greatness. In fact, two days before her disappearance, Aisha played in a league basketball game. Her team was undefeated at the time, but suffered their first loss the day after Aisha fouled out of the game. Because of Aisha's competitive fire and love for her teammates, she and the other girls cried as a result, but quickly mustered their resolve soon after and supported O'Brien in his own basketball game. It was a perfect example of Aisha's skill, passion, and sympathy. Despite her academic and athletic duality, Aisha was still quite reserved back at home. Her mother and father were quite suspicious of the world back in the late 1990s and the effects new technology, specifically the internet, had on young children's developing brains. Thus the couple decided to focus raising their son and daughter mostly around the extended family, their church community and local schools instead of an electronic atmosphere. As a byproduct of these methods, the degree household did not include a computer. The mother, Akila, reasoned that at the time, the nightly news seemed to have daily stories about paedophiles coaxing young minds via the internet. Nevertheless, Aisha didn't mind the lack of technology, already cautious by nature and shy in bigger social climates. She was more than okay with settling within the parameters of her parents' close watch and never strayed far from good behavior. It was this simple, if not hyper-secure way of living that made Aisha's disappearance that much more puzzling. She showed zero signs of disturbance or inclination to up and leave. Her intense fear of dogs led her parents to believe she didn't even like leaving the house in general when it could be avoided. Regardless, when Harold and Aquila woke up to celebrate their 12th year anniversary in marriage, the joy, love and excitement from 1983 was replaced with trepidation, mystery and helpless terror. On Valentine's Day 2000, 
Asia degree vanished. The mystery begins on February the 11th, 2000. It's a Friday and the degree siblings, Aisha and O'Brien, had the day off from school. They go to their aunt Keisha's house, just down the street in their home neighborhood, and later to their respective basketball practices. The following day on Saturday, February 12th, Aisha and her youth basketball team suffer their first loss of the season. The loss upsets Aisha and her friends who walk around the court faking injuries before a fellow teammate asks them to stop. Aisha eventually comes around and understands the situation, reverting back to her normal self later in the day. That evening, Aisha sleeps over at her cousin's slumber party where the girls watch television late into the night. On Sunday, February 13th, Harold and Aquila Degree pick up their daughter and the family attends church. Immediately following, they go to the residence of another cousin, Shalonda Brown, where Aisha's grandmother gifts her cologne and candy. Exhausted from the slumber party, Aisha returns home and goes to bed at 6.30 p.m. Her rest is disturbed a couple of hours later when a gusty thunderstorm hits the Shelby area. Aisha heads to the living room to watch television with her parents. At around 9 p.m., a motorcycle crash in the neighborhood takes down power lines, causing the Degree household to lose electricity. Aquila decides to wait for the children's bath until the morning and sends Aisha and O'Brien to bed early. About two hours later, at 11 p.m., Harold Degree runs out to the store to get some last second gifts for his wife, excited to celebrate their 12th anniversary as a married couple. After the clock strikes midnight and Valentine's Day begins, the power is restored at about 12.30 a.m. Aquila wakes her husband up, who sleeps on the couch, and tells him to move the kerosene lamp. Harold can't go back to sleep and watches more TV later checking on Aisha and O'Brien, who were both soundly asleep in their beds at 2.30 a.m. Sometime in the very early a.m. hours, O'Brien Degree wakes up and hears his sister stirring in bed, at one point hearing her climb out of bed and walk to the bathroom. It is unconfirmed whether or not he heard Aisha return. It's between this moment and 4 a.m. on February 13, 2000, that Aisha grabs her backpack stuffed with clothes and sneaks out of her room her family none the wiser. At 5.45 a.m., Aquila wakens to get her children up and ready for Monday morning classes. However, when she checks the kids' bedroom, she finds O'Brien asleep and Aisha's bed empty. She soon finds the rest of the house void of her daughter's presence and restlessly searches the nooks and crannies of their home. Harold soon joins the immediate search and when they find Aisha's set of house keys are also missing, they call her grandmother who lives across the street. The grandmother informs them that she never saw or heard from Aisha. Harold and Aquila are left to walk up and down the street, screaming their daughter's name, desperate and afraid. When no trace can be found in the first hour of their search, the degree couple calls police at 6.39am. Authorities show no hesitation and arrive on the scene six minutes later. They comb the neighborhood, find zero clues, and decide the situation is indeed bigger than originally thought. The sheriff's office calls in search dogs, rescue ops, special detectives, and the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigations. At 2 p.m., the degree residence is taped off by state investigators who find there are no signs of forced entry, forced exit, or foul play from anywhere inside the home. Through the search of Asia's bedroom and belongings, with the help of Aquila's familiar recognition, they build an inventory of Asia's missing items that she most likely brought with her. This consists of a red vest, blue jeans with a red stripe, a white shirt, a black and white shirt, black overalls with a Tweety Bird image, a black Tweety Bird pocketbook, candy, and her house keys. Later that afternoon, two truck drivers come forward with stories about potential Asia sightings from earlier that morning. The first man, Jeff R., states he saw a little girl walking along the North Carolina Highway 18 in a downpour at approximately 3.30 a.m. His location was just over a mile south from Aisha's house. The second man, retired sheriff's deputy Roy B, along with his son, saw what they first thought to be a short statured woman at 4.15 a.m. walking down Highway 18 just before the Highway 180 intersection. This was also about a mile south of Aisha's house, and Roy sent out an alert to fellow truck drivers to keep their eyes open. After he circled back a few times to get a better glimpse of the wandering figure, 
she ran off the road and into the nearby woods. This would be the last known, though unconfirmed sighting of Asia Degree. After Jeff and Roy came forward with their leads, investigators set up a five mile radius search in the woods near Highway 18 and Highway 180. Unfortunately, the weather takes away the bloodhound's abilities to pick up any scent, and the muddy search turns up nothing. When the sun goes down that Valentine's Day, Harold and Aquila are interviewed by State Bureau. They are quickly ruled out as suspects and fully cooperate with police. The first major clue in the case comes the following day on February 15th. A volunteer search team asks Shelby citizens, Rayleigh and Debbie Turner, if they can check their property for signs of Asia, considering their property was a mile south of the degrees and somewhat close to the highway sighting marks. The Turner couple happily obliges and opens their doorless structure in their backyard where old furniture was stored. In it, they discover candy wrappers, a green marker, a 1996 Atlanta Olympics pencil, and a small photograph of a young girl who looks very much like Aisha. These items are classified as evidence and thought to be artifacts from Aisha's book bag she took with her. Another day passes before police arrive on scene at the Turners on February 16th. They hand over the little photograph, but theorize the house is too far for Aisha to stumble upon. Another one of their neighbors, Reverend Mackie Turner, says that his beagles usually barked whenever a stranger approached his home, but they were quiet on Valentine's morning. On February 17th, investigators find more candy wrappers around the Turner residence, and the couple turns over the rest of their findings. Police then interview other families of the girls on Asia's basketball team, and confirm the candy wrappers match the candy handed out to the players from Asia's basketball game that previous Saturday. However, none of the degree family members, nor Falston Elementary School students, recognize the young girl in the wallet photograph, and it's decided, while related to the investigation, the photo is not that of Asia Degree. After three more days of exhaustive searches, authorities scale back the hunt and end the official search on February 20th, 2000. In a two-fold act, a part of law enforcement's investigation, March 22nd produced the next two updates. First, supporters erect a missing persons billboard at the exact spot the truck driver saw Asia run into the woods off Highway 18. Second, police announced they've interrogated a bevy of potential suspects, ranging from degree family friends to sex offenders in the area. During these interviews, the authorities build a psychological profile of a possible abductor but never release it to the public in hopes to protect Asia. The next major clue is unearthed by grading contractor Terry Fleming on August the 2nd, 2001, a year and a half since Asia vanished. He is etching a driveway on the side of a hill when his tractor hits a clunky object covered with dark plastic. He cracks it open and finds a black book bag inside with an unknown name and address. Without cell service, but an unsettling feeling Terry cannot contact anyone but writes the information down. The morning after, on August 3rd, Terry gives the name and address to his wife, who recognizes the info and tells Terry to call the police because the credentials belong to Asia Degree. Officials arrive on the scene and discover the book bag had been wrapped in two trash bags and intentionally buried long before the unearthing. The Bureau would not directly identify what exactly is in the book bag but says it's 95% Asia's possessions, and the Charlotte Observer reports the contents included clothes and school supplies. A new search is soon put forth on August 15th, but the terrible conditions of both the terrain and weather make it almost unbearable. The three mile long dig turns up little outside of some animal skeletons and a pair of man's khaki pants, items neither confirmed nor denied to have relation to Asia's case. Another massive search goes underway in October of 2001, this time combing a six mile stretch down Highway 18. It would later be the first portion of a lengthy 26 mile long trail of sleuthing from Asia's home to the book bag excavation site and still turn up no clues. Over the next decade or so, authorities interview countless suspects, nearby criminals, searching endlessly across North Carolina and the lands linked to Asia and her family's past. In May 2016, investigators say they're looking for a dark green 1970s Ford Thunderbird or Lincoln Mark IV with rusty wheel wells, 
How or why the car connects to Asia is unknown, but still a current major point of interest. Biggest clues of all, however, pop up later in October of 2018. Investigators from the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office release a video pinpointing two major pieces of evidence they're seeking information about, giving zero context or details, but claiming these items have advanced the meticulous search for Asia degree. Because of how tightly wound the entire investigation has been kept, vital pieces of evidence are hard to signify, important only by the word of police through the funneling of local media. Thus, the most important case point can only be the most recent, providing a fresh chance for someone to come forward with a lead that could solve the mystery. The following is the exact video the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office released last October in 2018 pleading for public knowledge regarding two clues surfaced in the search. Listen closely, especially if you or anyone you know is familiar with the Greater Shelby, North Carolina area. Nine-year-old Asia Degree disappeared from her home in Shelby, North Carolina on February 14th of 2000. Since that day, the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation have followed hundreds of leads in an attempt to find her. Now we're asking everybody in the community for help with new possible clues on the case. I'm Detective Jordan Bowen with the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office. Our investigative team has discovered two items of interest that could possibly provide new leads about Ace's disappearance. The first one is a library book. If you or someone you know had this Dr. Seuss library book around the time of Aisha's disappearance and lost track of it, call us. Library records do not go back to the year 2000. The second item of interest is a t-shirt like this one. It is a concert t-shirt from the New Kids on the Block band. They are a boy band that first became popular in the early 1980s. They are still performing today. If you had a t-shirt like this one, or know somebody who did at any point in time, please call us. The number to reach the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office is 704-484-4822. Again, that number is 704-484-4822. Asia Degree is Shelby's sweetheart, and we know that everyone in this community wants the same thing when it comes to this case, and that's to find out what happened to her and to bring Aisha home. Remember, there is a reward of up to $45,000 for information that helps find out what happened to Aisha Degree. Thank you, and please help us spread this message on social media by sharing our post. While the background to Dr. Zeus's book and t-shirt are unknown, the ambiguity still holds weight to the case. They can most certainly be connected, but they can also be wholly separate from one another. So even if you only know something about one half of the equation, do not hesitate to shed light on these peculiar subjects. Early on in the case, many Shelby residents and interested onlookers pondered if Aisha woke up in the middle of the night and decided to leave unannounced, on her own authority. Many of these supporters couldn't get past the situation of a packed book bag with so much clothing and candy. It certainly seems as if Aisha was planning for a nine-year-old's idea of an adventure, making sure she had her favorite outfits and plenty of candy to provide the sugar and energy necessary for an imaginative quest. What was missing from the theory was any clear motive and sensible reasoning to explain a single-digit aged girl leaving a simple, sufficient life while Asia had more of a sheltered childhood, she loved the friendly conclusion and was still able to maintain a healthy social life in extracurricular activities at school. She was close with her family, both in personal relationships and geographic proximity, and obviously found tight-knit friendships in her cousins and fellow peers on her basketball team. There were no reports of youthful rivalries or bullying, and Harold and Aquila provided everything their children needed Thus, if Aisha did leave as a runaway child, it was for a completely unexpected, unexplainable reason. Maybe she had a goal, 
only she was aware of as the result of a creative young mind. Or maybe it was the result of an unknown, sinister encounter she had the previous weekend. Maybe she made innocent plans to meet a friend, or even a stranger, for a Valentine's Day engagement, and packed the only way she knew how, instructed to leave before dawn at the ignorance of her parents and brother. It's a hard theory to swallow, considering the complete lack of supporting evidence, and the fact that Aisha had little connection to anyone outside of her controlled circle. The idea of a potential kidnapping spawned whispered speculation about Aisha's disappearance as well. Obviously, police ruled it out right away after a few detailed inspections of the degree children's bedroom and exit routes proved foul play was a non-factor. Of course, there's always a possibility that an abductor was stealthy enough to get in and out, careful not to leave fingerprints or any trail behind. Or, as a few corners of the internet like to hypothesize, the culprit came from within the household, placing suspicion on Harold Degree himself. The theory is based on the fact that Harold was the last person to see his daughter, spent most of the evening away from his wife on the couch, and made an unscheduled trip to the grocery store late at night. However, the circumstantial facts end there. Aisha's father, and entire family for that matter, have denied any such rumors or conspiracies. They point to Harold's underlying love for Aisha, apparent all throughout her young life. He, along with Aquila, has spent hundreds of dollars, thousands of hours, and never-ending energy looking for their precious daughter. He has cooperated with police investigations, and was ruled out by the authorities very early on, and for what it's worth, passed polygraph tests. While it's easy to point fingers at physical people with faces we can see, it's more than likely a figure yet to be identified who took Aisha's life into their own hands. Still keeping an abductor theory in mind, some internet sleuthers wonder if a serial killer was involved. North Carolina has had its share of murderous minds, such as the Edgecombe County serial killer, but very few line up their insidious activity with the timeline of Aisha's disappearance. The one interesting possibility is Scott Williams, a serial killer who murdered three women spanning 10 years in 1997, 2004, and 2006. The homicides took place near Monroe, North Carolina, only a couple counties over from Cleveland County, and the degree's hometown of Shelby. Scott Williams's whereabouts in late 1999 are unknown. However, he was also charged with kidnapping and rape against two other women in 1995, and most interestingly, in 2000. Yet considering all of the potential in Scott's history and criminal inclinations, his modus operandi doesn't match Aisha's profile. Scott mostly preyed upon middle-aged white women and had no prior incidents with young African-American girls. Also, because he was entering into the criminal database of the United States Justice Department, his DNA and fingerprints would be available to match if the investigators on Asia's case discovered either type of evidence in their hunt for answers. It's more than likely Scott Williams is a circumstantial suspect, holding little weight in the lineup of theoretical suspects. In terms of other possible serial killers or murderers, the sad fact of the matter is, many cases involving African American children, teenagers and women are left unsolved, unaccounted for, and kept out of the media. Thus, evaluating patterns and creating a database for killers with similar profiled victims doesn't exist, leaving the world to ponder if there was indeed a serialized string of kidnapped black females in the Carolinas at the turn of the millennia, left in the mud and forgotten, or worse, ignored. Before we divulge our hypothesis of Aisha's unsolved disappearance, we want to make known our conclusions presented in Cold Case Detective are purely logical speculation based on evidence, circumstance, and factual subtext. We are only privy to the same information presented in each video, and we do not attempt to promise certainty or an expert guarantee on the findings we reach in closing. We simply observe, research, and report. In regards to the nine-year-old girl who vanished without a trace on Valentine's Day of 2000, we believe an explanation derives as a combination of the theories discussed in the previous segment. The seemingly intentional packing of her book bag leads us to figure Aisha did indeed leave the household on her own. Why? It's nearly impossible to fathom. Whether or not someone asked her to leave is too vague of an assumption to try and hone in on the details, 
but still a curious speculation. Then, sometime after leaving her house, Aisha lost herself along the North Carolina highways and wandered into the woods, meandering without a goal or comfort and surviving on the candy she packed. Somewhere along the way, she probably ran into something sinister, or rather, someone sinister ran into her. It's at this point, Aisha's trail goes cold, most likely taken against her will in the clutches of unidentified shadows. There are zero signs pointing to either life or death, but with reassounding optimism, there is a chance Aisha's heart beats just the same that it did 19 years ago. In the end, the stronger conclusions rest within the clues presented by detectives in October of 2018, the Dr. Zeus's children's book, McElligot's Pool, and the concert t-shirt for the pop band New Kids on the Block. There's a good possibility that either these items were found in Aisha's book bag, recovered in August of 2001, that these items were confirmed to be in the Degrees household when Aisha went missing, but disappeared afterwards, or these items were recovered separately and tested positive with Aisha's DNA. We believe Aisha's DNA was in fact found on the book, as well as other sets of unidentified DNA. Asking people to come forward who may have checked the book out from the library or known someone to have touched it at some point would help investigators inquire about further DNA testing. The same can be hypothesized with the shirt. In a similar scenario, the sheriff's deputy might not actually have the shirt in evidence, but have proof that Aisha owned one at the time of her disappearance, and finding one out in the public could bring in new suspects and find new leads via testimony or DNA data. In conjunction with the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office and their newly presented clues, we plead for anyone with connection to the book or the shirt to come forward with information. Even if it seems trivial, nonsensical, or completely unrelated to Asia's case, you never know when the key will come from within the cracks. The Degree family is certain Asia is still alive out there in the world and are hopeful to learn of her fate in their own lifetimes. With the help of a wider audience, Harold and Aquila can find a growing optimism in their 19-year-old wish. A wish to reunite with their bubbling daughter. A wish to find the spark of delight in their lives that was Aisha Degree, so passionate about her friends and her family and growing as an individual. A wish to give their missing child the potential she had so many years ago, to experience a full life completed with hopes and dreams, successes and trials, lessons and laughter and love. And regardless of how it's achieved, let's shed some light on Asia Degree's mystery and make sure that next Valentine's Day, Harold and Aquila return to the days where their anniversary was defined by joy and excitement, a day full of family bonding, a February 14th void of confusion and sponsored by closure. If you have any information or know of someone who might, please contact FBI Charlotte at 704-672-6100 your local FBI office, or the nearest American embassy or consulate. This has been Cold Case Detective.